where there is no foundation and you will sink into the sand and you will be everlasting cast out but because those who believe in Jesus because he is the rock when you build your belief upon the one true word on Jesus who is the rock when God shakes this world because he's truly going to shake every one of you and this world if you're founded on the rock your faith will not be shaken you will continue according as many people through great persecution of the church because you have believed in him and many Christians will die believing in Jesus but in the assurity that when they die they will have everlasting life through Jesus only. So if you are religious today, I warn you by the word of God that your religion will be truly shaken when God comes to shake this world and he will shake every building and every mountain and this world will shake under your feet. Because that is the word of God, and that's what he will do. But his church will not be shaken. Just as in Israel, when they were in bondage in Egypt, in Moses' time, when all the darkness and all the plagues come upon Egypt, not one of the believers that Moses spoke of got the plague. Not one of them saw the darkness that was around that the Egyptians saw. Because God went before them and protected them and all they saw was the light of God in Egypt before them. But the evil Egyptians only saw darkness. And there was no sickness on the Jews who were conformed by God. So when God told Moses to tell his people to kill a lamb, a perfect lamb, and to cover the door lintels with that blood, it was a pre-shadowment of Jesus who is the sacrificial lamb likewise of the New Testament whose blood is equally powerful to stop the angel of death coming upon you. And so therefore, those people in Egypt escaped Egypt because God was working in their lives. But the Egyptians, when they chased Israel, God totally and utterly destroyed all those Egyptians who was evil and wanted to destroy Israel. And so likewise, in the last days, just as it will be in the times of, Mo of um, um, Noah, great times will come. And however much warning will be spoken into this world. Sadly, just as in Noah's time, they didn't heed the word of God. And when God sent the flood in this world, in the times of Noah, he prepared those who would listen through Moses and an ark was built. And when the flood came, eight people out of all the millions that were on this earth didn't believe what God had said through Moses and therefore they perished and so God says that when God returns just as in the times of Noah only his church his righteous church will be saved but everyone else will go the same way as they did in the times of Noah now if you don't believe the word of God continue the way that you are going and you will reap corruption but when you truly 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 receive and repent by the blood of Jesus you shall be saved now I've noticed that when the truth is spoken 
for a moment people listen, but very soon they get bored with the truth because the word of God says that they have itchy ears and they will go and listen to men of darkness because that's where they're from. They are of the world, they conform to the world, and however much you bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to them, it will never change some people. It will change some people for a moment, but the cares of this world will take them away again. So that's why Jesus spoke to us of those parables. So I finish with, God wants to bless you, every one of you today that has heard the word of God in truth. And he wants to empower your life to escape the corruption that sin in your life is killing you. And when you can escape by the power of God, how much greater power do you have or want or need in your life to escape? Amen. So today is the day of your salvation. God. Pardon not your heart, so peace be with you. Do you want me to give a testimony? <laughs> I worked in uh, in Africa, South Africa. I worked in the bush in the 70s. There was no television then. The only thing you could do was drink. And every night I went to the bar and drank. And that's all I did for 12 years. I became an alcoholic. I used to walk around Johannesburg and bare feet and long hair. I should go into the pubs begging for booze, for alcohol. My life was a mess. I couldn't hold down a job. I should travel from job to job, from town to town. People were sick of me. They used to pass over the other side of the street because I was a nuisance. That's all I wanted to do was drink. I was a hopeless alcoholic until Jesus came into my life. One day a friend of mine, a carpenter, said to me, he said, come into my flat. I was homeless. I had nowhere to stay in Johannesburg. There's no welfare state out there. If you don't work, you don't eat. And he said, Glenn, he says, come into my place, he said. He said, you can sleep on the floor. And I slept on the floor of this carpenter's house, flat for three months. And he said, Glenn, he said, I'm going to church. He says, I go to a little Baptist church, a little American missionary just around the corner. He said, you want to come? I said, no, I said, I just want a drink. I says, go and give me a bottle of booze. He says, clean me, says, the door's always open for you. And one day, I was in terrible pain on a Sunday. He says, Glenn, why don't you come along to church now, he said, and meet these people. I said, okay, I'll go. And I sat at the back of the church. I sat at the back for three months, and I listened to the gospel of how Jesus could change your life. And I needed that Jesus. I saw a different type of people, a loving people, people with love in their hearts, whose lives have been changed by the power of God. That's why I call it. And they'd give their testimonies, how wretched and hopeless they were. And I would listen and think, Lord, I want this. I want this spirit of life, this new life that Jesus gives you. I was a mess. I was hopeless. There's no way I could come out of this hopelessness. There's no way that I could succeed in life. Because I've tried my way and I've lost. I tried my way and it didn't work. I couldn't hold down a job. I was an alcoholic. It's all I wanted when I got my week's wages was drink. And I wouldn't go to work in the next day. And I heard the pastor preach about Jesus, how Jesus loves us, and how when we accept him as our saviour, he comes in, all we have to do is ask him right now, you don't need to come down here, you can say, Lord Jesus, right now where you are, Lord Jesus, come into my life as Lord and saviour, take my life and let it be, consecrated, Lord to thee. And Jesus is a man of his word. He's here right now. He's at the hearts of everyone in the universe. And he's waiting to come in. The Holy Spirit 
is when they come in, because Jesus is a gentleman. He doesn't force his way in. If a, if, a, if a stranger comes to my house, he knocks on the door. He doesn't barge his way in. And I open the door to him. And that's just like Jesus. You must open the doors of your heart. Say, Lord, my life, I'm searching. You might not be as hopeless as I was. It just might be searching. The Spirit of God might be moving on your life. He might be drawing you to Him. Because no man comes to the Father unless He draws Him. No man comes to me unless the Father draws Him. And Jesus is ready to come in. Friend, open your heart to Jesus tonight. Ask Him to come into your life. Ask Him to come in. Test Him and see. Lord, my life's a mess. Lord, I'm unhappy. Lord, I've got a bad marriage. Just tell Jesus about it. And you know what God did to me? Within six months, he took away the alcohol and the cigarettes. He took away the hopelessness. He took away the despair. He took away the lost life, the wanderings in the wilderness. He took away the darkness, the slippery slope. He took away the hate and the bitterness in my life. And he gave me his life, a new life. And Jesus gave me the things he promised in the word of God. He gave me peace. He gave me new life. He gave me happiness. And he gave me a purpose. He set me on a straight way. He put my feet upon a rock, a foundation that will not slip. And I built my house upon a rock because God has done that for me. And you know what? He'll give you good gifts. Already now, he knows what you need. Whatever that is, he'll give it to you. Just test God and see that he will change your life. He has come to give you new life. To all those that believe and receive, you can become the children of God. Give praise to Jesus, because he loves you even now. Right to the last second of the universe, he'll be crying out to you, come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. Come unto me, I'll give you rest for your soul. I'll give you peace in your heart. I'll give you love towards your fellow men. But most of all and most importantly, he'll give you a fellowship with himself. He'll give you oneness with God. He'll give you atonement, a oneness with him. You will become the children of God, the children of light, other than the children of darkness. He will give you the light of life. And the love of God shall dwell in your hearts. And it'll be that love and the Spirit of God that will bring him to himself. Bring you to himself. Friend, do not walk away in darkness today. Time is running out. Look at Israel. Time is running out. Look to the fig tree. It's blossoming. Time is running out. Ask Jesus to come into your life as Lord and Savior, the Son of God. God came down as Jesus. You say no man has seen God. Man has seen God because he's seen Jesus. Jesus says when you see him, you see the Father. Ask Jesus Christ into your life because he died for you. He shed his blood upon the cross. For you may have forgiveness of sins and a new life in him. Brothers, come to Jesus now. Ask him to come into your life. Sisters, I don't care what you're on. You can be on hard drugs. You can be on heroin. You can be on 10 bottles of whiskey a day. You can be a walking wreck, an emotional cripple. He'll heal all that. He'll heal, he'll heal you physically. He'll heal you emotionally. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, friend. Get down on your knees tonight, by your bedside, and say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Come into my heart as Lord and Savior, and take my life and let it be. Consecrated, Lord, to thee. Amen. 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 Bless you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Jesus said these words, if you're offended with him, he will be offended with you. You know, you, you've got to be a, you've got to be totally insane to be offended with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, your your brain is shot away. You're not offended to sin, but you're offended with the God of perfect love and truth. Total insanity. And you know, as natural men and women, we don't realize this because we're conditioned by sin. We're, we're, we're created in sin and we're taught to sin and we dwell in sin. And we are very selfish creatures. Men and women, I'm telling you honestly, man, the natural man and woman, we are very selfish. We are extremely selfish creatures. It's a total disgrace, the selfishness that's in the heart of men and women. It's terrible to die a selfish man or woman. What a disgrace. God has no selfishness in him. Men and women, you are separated from God. You know that spells destruction. Total destruction. Being separated from God. It's very deep and very serious. And you're living an illusion on this earth. Everyone in this world is living a lie. We are not humans of the truth. We are not created in the truth. We are not born of the truth. We are born in deceit. We are created in a lie. Do your own thing. I have yet to truly capture the very seriousness of what it is to be thrown into hell. I have a small percentage of what it is to die in your corruption and to be a cursed thing forever in the sight of a holy God. The more I look at my own heart, I realize I'm not holy. I'm not pure. I don't love like God. I don't forgive like God. And God commands me to love and forgive like his son Jesus. You need life. You don't need a new religion, and you don't need to practice your religion. You need a new birth from God, to be a daughter of God, to be a son of God. You need a whole new birth, a whole new person, a whole new creature. That's what you need, the sons and daughters of Almighty God. Are you a son of God? Are you a daughter of God? You're not. You're not unless God has given you a second birth, a holy birth. You're not a daughter of God. You're not a son of God unless you've received a supernatural birth from God himself. And your religion is not going to do it for you. 
You us. Listen, big boy, you can talk later. Okay? <laughs> Praise God. Dumbing down. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in the flesh, came into this world to make a whole new race of people born of Him. Not of Adam. If you're of Adam, if you're the seed of Adam, which you are, the seed of the flesh, you are not God's children, Jesus says. You are children of the wicked one. The spirit that dwells in you is from the devil. It hates God. It disobeys God. It will take you to your death. The spirit that dwells in you. And you need to do something about it. Or you're going to lose your life forever. And it's very serious. Men and women, we don't realize the seriousness of the day of God's judgment on this earth. We need to realize the seriousness of the day of judgment. It's no good running away from it. It's no good pushing it to the back of your mind. It's no good saying to yourself, I'll just eat, drink, and be merry and do my own thing. It's no good saying, we all die, it's natural to die. Because it's not natural to die. You're dying because man believed the lie of the devil. That's why you're dying. And for you to live, you must believe the truth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You must be born of the truth. To be born of the truth, you must receive the truth. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. When are you going to call on the name, the holy name that is above every name? That name that can never perish. Jesus Christ, his name can never perish. His name is eternal. Amen. His name and his words live forever. Amen. And for you to live forever, Jesus Christ himself and his words must live on the inside of you. God's living word must be a holy fire inside your inner man. God's words are fire. But you don't see the fire of God's words. Please, spare me this week. I have a headache coming on already. Just as I heard your horrible voice. I don't mean to be cruel saying that, but you do try my patience. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're not cruel, you're just mad. Why are you preaching? I'm preaching this gentleman. Thank you. I thank you for going away. Because he's a Muslim. He must be arguing with you. You see, you throw, I've let you throw me off what I was saying. Men and women, I leave the women out in this You're going to let me talk to you. Men and women, how long more are you going to be conned and lied to by the God of this world, Satan himself? Satan stole this world from Adam and Eve. Satan is the father of all the children of the flesh. 
nature. Why are you going away? Why are you running away? You're running into deeper spiritual darkness. You're born, your spirit is born in darkness. You must receive the Holy Spirit of God to make your spirit man alive to God. What are you going to do about it? Because as my brother here said earlier on, time is running out. God made the devil, and the devil is evil. When there's a peace treaty made with Israel and the Palestinians for seven years, it is a false peace treaty. Satan, the man, is the only person who can make this peace treaty with Israel and the, and the Palestinians. He breaks this peace treaty after three and a half years and will have two-thirds of the Jews slaughtered and murdered and the women raped and the houses robbed of their wealth. He will devastate Israel. This world is insane. This world is insane with evil. We are so accustomed to doing evil. We don't know any other way. You are being drowned very quietly and subtly into total evil. Your minds are being subtly made more corrupt and wicked by the evil spirits that inhabit your mortal bodies. I'm telling you the truth. You are in a silent war 24 hours a day when you're awake and when you sleep. You cannot see the evil spirits in your body, but they can see you. They're planning your death and destruction <coughs> of planning the worst to happen to you. And this is what's going to happen to you. The worst is going to happen to you. You have no power over the grave. And you need to get power from Jesus Christ, the Son of God, over your death. Because Satan has the power of death and you are in his power. You are trapped in the power of spiritual wickedness and evil. And only the Holy Spirit of God can release you and deliver you from evil spirits. What are you going to do with Jesus Christ, the Son of God? What are you going to do with him? Are you going to continue to reject him? Are you going to continue to mock the word of God? You're mocking your own death. You're mocking your own death when you refuse and reject to accept Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as your personal Lord and Master. You're mocking your own death without Jesus Christ. And you will not enter the kingdom of God unless you're born a second time of God's incorruptible word. Unless you're born of God's Holy Spirit and by his son Jesus, you will never see God or enter the kingdom of God. You will be thrown out like a thief, like a murderer, like a liar, like a fornicator. God is holy. God is pure. Mankind is unholy, unpure, unclean. Can you hear? You need listen here. Listen here. Do me a favor. Praise God. Hallelujah. You need to repent and do God a favor. Praise God. 
I thought you were gone. Go to where? To hell. Go to where? Where you're going. When you go back to Ireland, then I will go. I don't need to go back to Ireland. You are a fat cow, look at that. It's so fat. I know, and you are an evil man. You are. Look at your eyes. It's dangerous. Why do you go and scream in this square? Person and devil in you, broken spirit in the holy It will work. It will work. It will work. You need a Guinness. It will work. You need a pint of Guinness. You need a Guinness. I want to talk. Please, boy. Okay, you can talk.